What's going on everyone and happy new year and thank you for watching Movie Emporium's most anticipated films of 2024 where I basically count down the list of films I think are going to come out in 2024 but who knows at this point. Okay, so as I've said, 2023, writer strike, producer strike, all kinds of strikes going on, things got pushed back, things uh, didn't make it in 2024, a lot of films are not going to be in 2024, that got pushed to like 2025, 2026, so... Uh, yeah, it's been a little, a little difficult to find the most anticipated films, but I found 15. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, like most of these films, they could get pushed back. There's going to be films that come out of Sundance and all the film festivals, which I haven't heard about yet or don't know anything about, which will probably be better films than what I'm going to announce as my most anticipated. And, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. It's going to be a really down year, like a really quiet year compared to most years. And that's all right. The writers and all the crew and cast and everybody who won the strikeouts and stuff like that will definitely get what they need. So I, I appreciate that. I'm willing to have a down year for film if it means that people get paid what they should get paid and stuff like that. So anyways, with that said, um, I'll have pictures and stuff. I won't have too many trailers or anything of much because there's not really much on these films yet outside of a few films. So for my honorable mentions, my four or five honorable mentions, the first one is The Bike Riders, which was supposed to come out this year, but got pushed back because of the strike. Uh, I got mixed reviews, but I'm still intrigued. It's directed by Jeff Nichols, who has some done some really interesting films. It stars, of course, uh, Tom Hardy and Jodie Comer and Austin Butler. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, I don't know much about it. Like I said, the trailer is supposed to be a pretty decent film, depending on who you talk to. Uh, the an Another one is Twisters, Lee Isaac Chung's uh, like directorial like follow-up to, uh, of course, Minari. Um, no footage, nothing, not even really many pictures on this film, so who knows what's going on with it, but will it be good? We'll see what happens. Uh, another one is uh, Wolves, which is uh, John Watts' film with George Clooney and Brad Pitt, once again. It's, you know, George Clooney and Brad Pitt, so you have to at least give it a, a look and kind of a, hopefully a feel on it. Um, another one, I don't even know if it's going to come out this year, but I'm just going to put it on my list anyways, The Toxic Avenger with, of course, Peter Dinklage. Uh, I got rave reviews at like two places that it was screened at, but there's no information about whether this film's going to come out this year. That's why it's not my top 10. It's more of an honorable mention. Because if it doesn't come out this year, I, there's no point in even saying this is the top 10 most anticipated because I've gone through that many times with many films. So right now, it's uh, it, we'll just put it at honorable mention. And the last film is, of course, of course uh, Robert Eggers' Nosferatu remake. Uh, I like The Northman. I'm kind of hit or miss with Robert Eggers, but I'm really interested to see what he's going to do with Nosferatu. And he'll probably make it cool, he'll probably make it unique. So, yeah, that's five honorable mentions, to be fairly honest, on what's going to come out this year. And it'll lead into the top ten. So we'll start out with number 10, which is... So as I was looking and searching for most anticipated for 2024, a film that I came across real late before I even started recording is David Cronenberg's The Shrouds. Now, it has Vincent Cassell in it, who I think has worked with, uh, of course, with David Cronenberg before. Um, don't much don't know much about this film, but I heard it's very personal to David Cronenberg, which seems to be every film in his uh, repertoire. Uh, if it's David Cronenberg, even though I wasn't a huge fan of his last film, uh, I still color me intrigued. So... You know, with the way this year is playing playing out and stuff like that, I'm really interested to see what he's going to do with the Shrouds. This may be a 2025 film for all I know, but I've heard it's 2024. It's listed under Canadian Films of 2024. So I, I'm hopeful that it'll come out, and I'm always up for a good uh, David Cronenberg film. So number 10 is the Shrouds, and number 9 we have... Now, with this film, it's been very controversial, but has 100% of Rotten Tomatoes, and I've heard nothing but great things about this. This film is The the People's Joker, which is directed by Vera Drew. Um, once again, I don't know a huge amount about what this film is, but I really want to see it just on the basic fact that everybody I trust who has seen this film really enjoyed it. It's like one of their top 10 films of the year that have seen it this year. Uh, unfortunately, it's not coming out until 2024 in the States, uh, so I don't know when it's coming, but I know it's coming soon. And if somebody's willing to put out a film that, you know, is about something they love, you know, a genre they love and stuff like that, and it's supposed to be really good and it's gotten approval from all kinds of people, that's right up there. And it's a movie that, you know, has a trailer, has a poster, and once again, it's very controversial because the character person is transgender, go figure. Um, but yeah, I'm really intrigued by this film and hopefully it's as good as I hear. So The People's Joker is number nine. Number eight is... Bong Joon Ho, the famous director of Parasite and Snowpiercer and on and on and on, is directing a movie called Mickey 17, which is a clone movie that stars, of course stars Robert Pattinson. It feels similar to like the Moon. No <laughs> spoiler alert, you know, for a very old film. Uh, but it's about a guy who's sent to die and then reborn as a clone 
So this one also played the festivals was well received and uh, I'm all about it. You know, bring it on. I'm really intrigued by what I'm interested in seeing. I love Robert Pattinson at this point because he's shown he's a very talented actor and Bong Joon-ho has proven that he's a very talented director as well. So it comes out very soon. I think on either Netflix or Apple, one of those streaming services will probably be in theater as well. So number eight is Mickey 17 and number seven is so finally, Adam Sandler is doing a more dramatic film in the Netflix uh, contract that he has. Uh, Spaceman, which is, I think, about an outwardly man who comes from space or whatever. I don't know. Uh, the trailer looked interesting, uh, or at least the pictures I've seen look interesting. You know, Adam Sandler doing more dramatic work is always a good thing because he's very talented at doing the dramatic work than he is more as a comedian. So we'll see what happens there. Once again, it's gonna be on Netflix very soon. So I'm, you know, I'll watch it, review it, see how it plays out. But for right now, it's number seven on my most anticipated list of the, you know, 2024. And uh, yeah, Adam Sandler doing dramatic uh, sci-fi. We'll see how that works. So number six is. So Lee Wanell directed The Invisible Man. It was fantastic. A definitely interesting, more unique R-rated twist on the genre. So he's uh, lined up to do The Wolfman with Christopher Abbott. Um, sign me up. It, even if it's low budget, the last thing he directed was The <laughs> Invisible Man. I'm all about it. Give me everything. Even if the movie sucks, at least he tried to probably make an interesting movie. And Lee wan is a director that is very uh, good at what he does when he's very committed. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That is going to be uh, number six, The Wolfman, starring Christopher Abbott, which is a take on the Wolfman uh, horror film. So there you go. So the Alien franchise has been hit or miss, like more miss than hit. It, even with Ridley Scott coming back to do Alien films. Um, yeah, it's not been a very good kind of life for Alien in general. But Alien Romulus is directed by Fede Alvarez. Um it's a film that if Fede Alvarez gets what do what he wants to do, could be a, a good crowd pleaser. I mean, it could be, it worked really well. Look what he did with the Evil Dead movie. And um, yeah, I'm all about what Fede Alvarez can do. He's a very talented director, very good at what he does. And uh, I'm, even though we've only seen like, you know, a slate, you know, the film slate that they use for the film that's completed, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do in this universe. And what, what the movie's about has not really been said. It just says it's another alien movie, so it's anticipated just from that that alone with Fede Alvarez, and I'm sure he has a pretty decent cast. So number five is Alien Romulus, and number six or number four, sorry, is so Alex Garland doing topical material is nothing new. You look at every movie or script he's ever written, there's always a very hard edge sci-fi nature to it outside of men, which I don't know if it's really sci-fi. Uh, he is very topical and very opinionate, opinionated. And this movie is very uh, divided on what people think about it. I'm all about it. It looks cool. It's civil war. Kirsten Dunst is in it. A bunch of other people are in it. It's a movie that looks very much like depending on how you feel the way that or where the United States could be headed if we're not careful. And I, I love when, you know, Alex Garland is willing to do something that a lot of people won't. And that's be hard hitting, hard edged and willing to take those chances. So even if the movie sucks, like a lot of people thought about men, I got to give it an anticipated look. So I'm looking forward to it. it is number four on my list, which leads to number three, which is now leave it to me. You know, Maxine was a huge surprise that got announced because last year Pearl was a huge surprise. that It just kind of came out of nowhere. They filmed it at the same time as X. Um, at this point, I'm hugely excited for this film. You know, Mia Goth and Ty West have become like the, the, the creator couple that have created some really uniquely interesting, darkly disturbing films. And I believe Maxine is going to be in that same realm. You know, each movie that's come out has been a very different genre. And I think this is going to be no different. And even if it's not well received by a lot of people, I think it's going to be something that is different for what this, what this, you know, year will give us, which will be hopefully not a lot of crap, but I'm sure it will be. But I'm looking forward to Maxine. I think it's going to be a really fun either capper to the trilogy or another film that in this kind of Pearl universe or X universe that stars Mia Goth. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I think it takes place here in the 70s or 80s. So, yeah, that's another plus, plus, another plus I should say. So number three is Maxine and number two is so Furiosa. Definitely looks like another George Miller film. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road was the, to me personally, the best movie of the decade. It was a movie that caught me so off guard that I wasn't expecting to have my mind blown. But whether this film lives up to that Mad Max Fury Road potential, um, we'll see. This, of course, has Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth in it. It's a film that definitely looks a higher budget. Uh, still interesting that George Miller still struggled to get this film off the ground, but... 
you know, with a film like this, I, I cannot not put my top 10 most anticipated because it's just a film that, you know, I give, I'm, I'm putting all my eggs in the basket that it's going to be a fantastically fun, entertaining, crazy, may not story well driven, but a film that should be entertaining for the summer. So yeah, Furiosa, you know, if they want to call it Mad Max story, whatever they want to call it, I'm all for it. So number two, Furiosa and number one should be no surprise because it's been on my list a couple of years now. So, we had Spider-Man Across Spider-Verse. We had Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Finally came out to the theaters. And now we have another film, which is in its second year, my most anticipated. Not number one at the point, but now it is because, honestly, there's not a lot of films coming out in 2024 that I'm like, super excited for. But, of course, Dune Part 2 uh, was a film that I put in you know high on my list last year. But it's number one because, one, like I said, not a lot of films coming out that I'm looking forward to. But also, it just looks incredible from the three, four trailers they put out already. Portion got pushed back because of the strike, which is perfectly all right. And uh, by March, we'll see if this is an Oscar Awards contender, which the first one was. You bring back the, the principal cast. You add in Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, and uh, ironically, Christopher Walken. And you got the makings for what will be a, another fantastic uh, Denis Villeneuve film. So at number one is, of course, Doom Part 2 chances are you've seen the trailers for it and if you're as excited as i am you have put this at your number one most anticipated outside of maybe a lot of people want deadpool 3 but i think this is this is something that will that will be great i have no qualms about whether this film would be great or not i think it will be but yeah number one is dune part two and there you go that is my uh top 10 most anticipated films of 2024 once again i know there's a lot of films that haven't been announced or haven't been created that will be able here by the end of the year but at this point these are films that i feel like will represent 2024 very very well in a year that's going to be a very slow kind of downturn compared to 2023 so yeah with that said that'll do it that we might take on the most anticipated films according to me of course of 2024 comments below as i always say let me know what your favorite films or most anticipated films will be of 2024 is there anything on this list that i didn't put on there all the good stuff otherwise if you like what you see on this channel awesome hit the subscribe button to join movie emporium hit that notification bell top to find what's coming next if you like this video awesome hit that like button and as always we'll see you guys on the next video peace out